chat. Um, feel free to add anything you would like to the agenda. I have a few things today and hopefully we can get through those and get a little feedback on a few things. So today, the question is last time you saw, oh, that was good. Dungeons and Dragons. It was so good. Really? It was so good. That was like a not on my list to see. I didn't think it would be good. So now I'll put it on my list. <laughs> it, it, it was pretty good. I liked it as well. Really? It huh. didn't do well in the theater, though. I mean, I think it was an effect of the post-COVID miasma that, you know, the release date was still yeah. good before people were really coming out. Um, I, I don't think they're going to green light a sequel because it just didn't, it just didn't do well. But I'm hoping it turns into like one of those cult hits, like The Princess Bride or something like that, because well, it really deserves a place in. Oh, well, I am glad I asked this question today. I just, <laughs> I got something to do tonight. It's nothing you know? to do with chaos, but you know. <laughs> I do, I, just, uh, I agree with you. It, it does kind of have some of that Princess Bride energy. So. Huh. All right, well, that's, that's a good, uh, <laughs> that's a pr pretty good recommendation, actually. So <laughs> Yo, pressure's, see pressure's on Dungeons and Dragons now. <laughs> that's great. Uh, I, I'm sorry if I cut you off, Rhea. No, I was also going to say to Allison, I love Nimona. That was beautifully done. I've never even I've heard of Nimona. The story and the animation. It's yeah. an animated movie? Mm -hmm. I have never even heard of it. A comic. Okay. Was the was the last time you saw Rushmore? Was it in nineteen ninety five or ninety six? Yeah. Matt, has it been that yeah. long since you've seen a yeah. good movie? Yeah, and then I just watched it again, oh. like over the weekend, and I'm like, that was really good. Yeah, well, I've never one. heard of Rushmore, so now I have one on my list to watch. It's Wes Anderson as a as the director, so. And it's got Bill Murray in it, like when he was young, because <laughs> like '95. So <laughs> also, also good. Yep. Wes Wes Anderson movies are kind of quirky. They are. They're a little bit odd. I watched the Royal Tenenbaums after that, and I didn't think it was as good. But I liked uh, I liked Royal Tenenbaums as well. Uh, I didn't dislike it. I just Bottle Rocket better. is Bottle Rocket was my favorite. Yeah, and each one of these two, well, sooner or later we'll get to the meeting, but each one of these has a really, <laughs> they have a really good soundtrack associated with them as well. Rushmore and Bottle Rocket and Royal Tenenbaums. So they're kind of, kind of known for those soundtracks as well. So, okay, well, now we'll move on. <laughs> now that we've now broken, we'll just the <laughs> broken the ice, this is great. Everybody has something to do. Um, so I, I'm just I'm going to bring up a proposed metric template. Um, I'm just circulating this to, to groups, and the reason I'm bringing it up here is um, this is something that we had talked about last time in this meeting, um, and so I just I'd like to get your feedback on uh, this revised metric template proposal, and so the motivation for this is some of our metrics are. They're kind of in a process of review, I would say at this point. So some of them are in really good shape. Some of them are in less good shape. Um, some of them still actually use a very old template. So we just, as part of the process of kind of cleaning up all of our metrics in chaos, uh, it was, this is a proposal to kind of have a metric that, or a template, I'm sorry, a template that we can go against in that revision process. So here, uh, based on the conversations that we've had, I think it was really just in this call last week, and then we have our metrics meeting call tomorrow, I'd like to bring up the proposed uh, template guide. So it would include a metric name as it does right now. It would include the question that the metric is intending to answer, which is still here. So whatever the question might be. Um, an overview, so this used to be description was one section and objectives was another section, so now I've just combined them into overview to describe um, kind of what this metric is about and who it's intended for. And the intention is here in the overview is to not get too wordy, to not exceed 200 words. So sometimes there are times when our description and overview is like super long and 
Um, so yeah, feel free to change any of the text in there as well. I was just kind of merging a couple different sections. All right, so that, so really honestly, it's that top two part, the name, the question, and the overview that would define the metric. You know what I mean? Like those are the, the key criteria, the key characteristics of what our metrics are. Then we would have a section that I'm not sure how to do it kind of logistically in Markdown and get it to the web, but it would be a section called want to know more or something like that. And it's a hidden section. So it's not always seen, you know, you don't see all the data in there. Um, but in that section would be um, filters, which is a something that's in our current metrics. So you may want to understand how to filter on the metric. That's this right here. Data collection strategies could be another optional header under want to know more. And oftentimes that includes like if it's a qualitative metric, like those that show up in the DEI working group a lot, it would be things like here are some sample survey questions or here are some sample interview questions that you might want to use to collect data about this. And then visualizations are the third want to know more. So they would be also optional. And it would be, say, visualizations that come from one of our tools like Augur or Grimoire Lab, or it could even be visualizations that I think come from a website. So, for example, I think in some of the DEI metrics, we point to websites that kind of demonstrate um, uh, the metric in practice. Um, so then the date it was created or retrieved as well. So you'd have this optional visualization, you would cite the tool or the website where you got it and the date where you either produced it or retrieved it. Um, references would be back as a as a this same level heading as questions overview and want to know more. The only reason I put it's optional is because there may not be any reference material for this metric. I suppose that's a possibility, but generally there always is. And then lastly, contributors. This is the list of people who helped develop the metric. Again, optional because nobody may want to list themselves as a contributor. Generally speaking, that's not the case, but I would just say it's not required. Um, so I'm just curious what people's thoughts are on this. Um, and I'd like to uh, hear what you think. I think this looks great. Um, okay. I think this, this aligns with the, the previous discussions uh, that we've had with it, uh, I think in the in the metrics working group meeting and in a few other places. Yeah. Uh, I just added a couple comments into the overview uh, just to give, I think in that overview section, we need to give very specific guidance on uh, what belongs there. And I know in the in the meeting we kind of talked about it, uh, but we uh, the the overview section is replacing two sections that were there pr prior. One was description, and then one was objective. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the problem we had had in those two sections prior is that uh, the content from either one sometimes the objective stuff would get put into description, mm -hmm. and sometimes the description stuff would get put into objective. Uh, but I think there for the for that overview section, I think there are three things that we kind of we really want to make sure we capture. And one of them is what explicitly, what very, what very specifically are we trying to measure? Or does the does the metric measure? And then that second part is what does measuring this metric, what part of community health can this metric help inform? Right. And then the and then the third part is. Uh, something that we've asked in the past, and I think we should continue to ask it, is how is this metric uh, related to diversity, equity, and inclusion? And if if relevant, can we add that as a uh, uh, as as a kind of a, a concept that this metric can help inform? And that that's all I have. Okay, I'm trying to capture what you're saying, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, your statements sort of inspired a thought, and I don't know if it's all that realistic or not, but I wonder if there, depending on the metrics we're collecting, if there are baselines of saying 
uh, for this particular metric, this is what you should be aiming for. Could you give an example, Ria? Yeah. Um, give me a metric and then I'll think about how I could phrase that. Um, well, maybe we could. Um, do you want to like a D? How about, how about, how about time to first response? Okay. Time to first response and how does that foster inclusion? All right. So maybe like a base, like, you know, if, if, if we could come up with a baseline of best practices on time to first response, I mean, it's obviously going to vary by project and how well staff the project is and you know, how much free time the people who are maintaining the project have. But I don't know if there are best practices that says time to first response should be within a week or within a month or within, uh, I think, a, almost email. I tried, I try very hard to abide by the 24-hour rule to respond to an email. Uh, I don't always make it, but is there something like that for, say, time to first response that we could give as guidelines or best practices to not just collect the metric, but also sort of encourage people as to what they should be aiming for. Yeah, I hear um, you. Go ahead, Kevin. Oh, sorry. Uh, I know in in academic literature, there's been there has been some studies that have looked at time to first response, and uh, generally it's reported as twenty four hours. Uh, so uh, a response within twenty four hours is more likely to. Uh, uh, for for new contributors, if a new contributor gets a response within twenty four hours, they're more likely to continue working in that in that community. Uh, so I I uh, I think that's super interesting, and and uh, and I definitely think we should pursue that. Uh, but I'm wondering if if that's almost a uh, guidance on that level is 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 almost more part of kind of our. The, the practical application of metrics that we might see in our models working group and in our the even the the data science working group whereas with the with the metrics template we might we might want to err on the side of simplicity and then provide guidance for around something like time to first response in through the models working group or the or the data science working group maybe through a, a different type of artifact uh, but ju just my thoughts but totally I, fair. I'm I'm not dwelling in those other groups. I have no idea what their ambit or facility is for encouraging reaching mm -hmm. better metrics. And if it's more germane to another group, I completely defer on yeah. that subject. I do think. Um, have you, Rhea, Have you seen those um, the guides that Don has been putting together? I don't think I've had a chance she's, to tell okay. them. She's been talking about those in the OSPO working group. Oh, I've been sure I have a conflict with that meeting. So oh, I, I keep okay. wanting to go to that, but I have not made it to okay. one. <laughs> one of those like triple or quadruple booked <laughs> times, you know? Um, yeah. So she, she has been working on a series of guides that start to Kevin's point that kind of start um, like ascribing value or how you might interact with particular metrics. So I think it hits exactly what you're talking about and, and really kind of talking through how people should think about these metrics in detail and in practice. Okay, then totally cool. Cool. Right now. Carry on then. <laughs> we shall carry on. <laughs> um, Kevin, do you think those see the three? I don't know if you see my screen, Kevin, but oh yeah, of course you can because you're on, <laughs> you're leaving comments. Um, are these, do these kind of capture what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. A description of. Or actually, I, I should say on the, the first one, once again, uh, actually, the, the first one maybe needs to be even a little more specific, right? So the, uh, so the what are you trying to measure question brings the uh, 
kind of makes you think about a concept, right? So we're trying to measure this concept, mm -hmm. uh, but it should really just be the description, the description, like what are we, if for example, if the, if the metric is time to first response, what are we trying to measure? We're measuring the amount of time that it takes a uh, member of the community to respond to a pull request or Sure. Or, or a comment. So, sure. kind of explicitly, what is the what is the thing that we're measuring? So maybe I just put it like this: like just describe the metric. Just uh, and yeah, may, and maybe even a little more uh, like that. What activity? Maybe what activity are you measuring or? Yeah. Describe so the in the in the past the and the the reason I the reason I'm kind of pushing this is because in in the past it'll be uh you know rather than what we what we've had as well we're trying to measure the responsiveness of a community right so well, what are you trying to measure we're trying to measure the responsiveness of a community in uh in in the uh, time to first response uh example right we're trying sure. to measure the the responsiveness of the community, right? So that, that yes, we are, but it's a higher level concept. And we really want to break it down to the, in this metric, we want to break it down to as much as we can, that specific activity that we're measuring that will inform this higher level concept. I get it. I just, I think I was, I'm getting a little bit hung up on activity, but it's probably just like, yeah, and activity is probably not a great word either. I, I'm just, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think that's why we've, I think that's why we've had problems with it in the past, right? Because it, okay. it's really, it's kind of that level of abstraction. Like we're trying to get to something very specific that can inform something more abstract. I added, do you see what I added? Who cares what this metric? So we had that section, if you recall, in the objectives, they would say like community managers care because this metric does X, Y, Z. Or open source program managers care because this metric does X, Y, Z. Okay, we'll have to see how well I like this just because it's explicit. Um, we'll have to see how well it fits within my, my arbitrary limit of 200 words. <laughs> Okay. Um, any other comments or thoughts? This is very helpful. Thank you. Any other comments or thoughts on the, the structure of the new, the proposed structure for metrics? To me, this is really cool because the metric might, at least for people who are coming to it for the first time, they would only see that, what I have highlighted. <laughs> Just tell me what the metric is. What's the question it's trying to answer? and then give me an overview of this metric. That's it. More detail can be provided if you really care to dig into it. Um, but this really solves a problem I think that we were having in that the metrics can be very long sometimes and completely overwhelming for people. And this will give people an opportunity to just get an initial glance at the metric and then explore more if they would like. I have a quick question. Would it mm -hmm. be a appropriate or even desired to have a how do you measure this metric? I mean, it, it, you have described what you are measuring, and that might be the same thing, but I'm yeah. wondering if there is a specific path to actually gathering the data to fulfill that metric, or if there's an explanation of how, how to actually achieve the data gathering, does that need to be explained or submitted? 
We, so we do, so for the qualitative metrics, we have that data collection strategy section, which is like, here are some survey questions or here are some interview questions that you could use. And we use this pretty often in a lot of our DEI related metrics. So how to collect the data using something like Grimoire Lab or Augur. Um, there was a point where we, we actually had the SQL statements <laughs> in the metric. It was like, wow. here's, here's the statement that you could use, but that obviously got really out of sync really fast. Yeah, I imagine so. All right, so it might just be too gnarly to try yeah. to capture in a simple form. Got it. Yeah, so the surveys and interviews, I think, are pretty stable. Connecting it to the software has proven to be a bit trickier. Okay. Uh, great. Thank you, everybody, for the feedback. I'll obviously continue to share this within chaos groups, but um, I'm pretty excited about this. All right. Um, let's see, the next thing on the agenda was our project badging promotion. So for those of you that are familiar, we have a project badging uh, initiative that has been launched and we really just launched it at Open Source Summit North America in Seattle, which was maybe, you know, four or five weeks ago. We have five projects that have been badged at this point, which is not terrible by any means, and it is pretty new, this program. So I'm just wondering if, you know, we should, there's going to be a communications team that um, Alice is kind of restarting and thinking about how we do messaging in the chaos project. I'm wondering if, if, if this is something out of DEI that we would like the communications team to message a little bit, you know, like to promote applications to project badging. So really that's it. It's not that something we would do. It's that we would say, yeah, this is something out of our working group that we would like to promote and then hand it off <laughs> to a, a new team that's forming. What do people think? Or if there's something else we might want to promote. Open to thoughts here. I'm not sure what this would look like, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Connecting with Alice and the group there. Is anybody on this call who has opted in to join Alice on the communications team? Not sure who has filled up. Sorry, out no. <laughs> no, that's fine. I just, I'm not sure who. Okay. Oh, I think both the project badging and the event badging are two great things to promote. Okay. Okay. I, I agree. That's why I put it here. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I'll add project and event badging. Okay, great. Um, event badging is doing quite well. So a lot of, a lot of groups are starting to, to participate there. And actually I can kind of just say it here too, that um, the new metrics have been added to the DEI event badging application. So we had talked about this for a long time. So thanks for everybody and their effort in doing that. But you can see if you click on in-person events, those new metrics have been included here. Um, so hopefully that'll go well. All right. Um, let's see, new metric draft. I think this was Elizabeth, but she's not here today. So I think she has been focusing on accountable leadership as a new metric. I don't know if anybody has any comments on that. I don't at the time, so. All right. Um, like I mentioned, the DEI event badging stuff has been updated. Um, I think we've been getting applications from like the Apache Software Foundation, which is nice. So it's nice to see that program kind of branching out into different organizations. Any thoughts or comments while I kind of get to these last couple items here? All right. Um, 
ambassador program. Anybody here want to talk about how this is going and what your thoughts are on this? This came up in the community call yesterday. So um, I think we had a couple ideas just about ambassador, ambassador responsibilities um, and how we understand ambassadors and what the roles would be. We also talked about in yesterday's community call about evaluation of ambassadors. So this is similar to the CNCF ambassador program, just people who are there to help promote the project and speak about the project. Um, so you can take a look at this document. I think the, the biggest thing that we talked about is Elizabeth and Mary Blessing are going to be kind of leading this effort and how we might go about once a person becomes an ambassador, how we might uh, ensure a, a, an evaluation at the end of, say, a year. You know, so if somebody becomes an ambassador, um, you know, say I become an ambassador and I don't do anything uh, over the course of the year, I'm still carrying that title, but there probably has to be some sort of reflective process on whether or not that person is, they think they're doing a good job and whether or not there's maybe more they could do. So we kind of opted in the meeting yesterday that we don't have a set number of things that we would expect any ambassador to do, but probably more of, you know, at the end of the year, just kind of a, a reflection with Mary Blessing and Elizabeth, just kind of how they think they've been doing and just things they might do in the next year. So kind of a, a soft, soft evaluation process. I don't know what y'all think of that. That's what came up yesterday. It's quite a group today. Again, anybody on the call that has been part of this ambassadors program? Just starting? Okay. No problem. All right. Um, is this the yeah? Is this the only part of the project where we're assessing community member performance? I think so. I'm not sure if that's weird or that's a good, yeah, it's a it's a fair point. Yep. Yeah. Uh, maybe something to think about if uh, if this is something we need to assess. Uh, or maybe if there are other places we should be assessing as well, and yeah. I, I don't have an answer either way. But it it uh, it did strike it does strike me as kind of odd that uh, this is the yeah. the one place where we've decided to assess community member performance. Yeah, um, I mean when you put it that way, I'd say let's not do any assessment because <laughs> I'd rather do less than more. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could just uh, maybe we could just say that the role is the role is for a year, and then. Uh, if you want to do it again, reapply. Uh, yeah. That's good. I think the concern that I recall being raised in a previous meeting was that people would sign up and then promote themselves as ambassadors, like use it, a, I don't know, as a resume builder, but not actually contribute anything. Um, I'm not sure how serious of a concern that is because we're a fairly esoteric group to begin with. So if someone's involved, they're probably involved, at least to the extent they're able to be. And I was reading through the list of things right there, Matt, and thought, yeah. well, technically, I guess I'm kind of an ambassador because I promote chaos within my company and to anyone who's willing to randomly listen to me about it but <laughs> I, you know i don't know that i am necessarily ready or willing to commit to something where i would have metrics that i'm judged on because i have enough of that already in my life <laughs> fair all right so i think this is kind of re-emphasizing kevin's point in a different way <laughs> that maybe it's not an evaluation, but it's just, um, I do yeah. like that idea of, if you would like to apply, feel free. It's a year long commitment. And if you would like to reapply, go ahead and do it again. There is something to that. There's a couple of different program, other programs I'm involved in where uh, I, I run a champions group within my company and Sometimes, you know, someone leaves the company and goes gets another job and they don't bother mm -hmm. to tell me. And then 
you know, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of things going on if you're changing your job. So I find out four months later, this person who I thought was one of my champions actually is not even at the company anymore. And so that becomes a, uh, you know, it becomes a aged list. But if you actually do force a refresh of the list every year, then you wouldn't end up with those aged out sort of people. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that. Thanks for these comments. This is really good. And this is oh, here. Oops. Maybe part of the re-upping would be something like just saying what you're committing to do as part of the ambassador program, just to give like a little after that year kind of thing. Or even when you apply for the first time, just you know, sort oh. of a I'm committing to do these things just as a way of reinforcing that this is not just something you randomly sign up for and then see what happens. That you know you're taking a proactive measure to do something in this. Right. Okay, I like that. So that would just be part of the application process and the renewal process. Yeah. Okay, fair. Just an idea. Yep. Okay, great, thank you. Um, any other comments on that? I appreciate that. All right. Um, there was it that I just pulled this from last last um, week's agenda, but uh, an outreach event with Project Enable that I just want to note for people here on the call. Um, are there any other events that people would like to point out that are going on in your lives you might want others to know about? Um, I don't know if Elizabeth mentioned this or not, but we're both from Cincinnati, Ohio, which is mm -hmm. the odd connection, especially since I lived there for 45 years and I, Elizabeth, and, and I worked in open source circles in that period of time and Elizabeth and I had never met yeah. each other in it all of that funny. time. So weird. <laughs> uh, because there's not a ton of open source going on in Cincinnati, you know, so you think we might have intersected at some point. However, I went to Northern Kentucky University for undergrad and they have a college of informatics there in their computer science department that focuses on a lot of cybersecurity oriented items. And I feel that health in open source software is a key player in the ultimate security of open source software. So I had mentioned the chaos program to the dean of that school and said, hey, you know, I, I know this really fabulous community manager who's doing this thing with the Linux Foundation chaos project. Maybe we could talk to your students about this. And he said, I love this idea. Let's do it. So we're, we, we, there's not a ton of plans right now that are baked in, but there's a tentative, we're going to get together at the end of summer and maybe do something okay. in the November timeframe. Okay. Um, I, that's cool. I completely agree with that. The health is a key component of cybersecurity concerns. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on here and I'm, I'm trying to pursue this kind of stuff as well. So I, I completely agree with you. I'm not quite sure what the best angle is here yet. Um, but I agree that I'd be interested to see what, what the talk is. If you end yeah. Up and, and if it, if it all aligns, I, I told Elizabeth, maybe I could even fly out to Cincinnati and hang out for the week when this happens. We'll just have to see how the timing aligns. So actually, I know another faculty member at the University of Cincinnati who I'm trying to align a talk <laughs> out there for next fall. Oh, really? Who? Uh, Sheree Daniel. Don't know them. Okay. I know a few of the professors that you see, or at least I used to. Uh, they may have all retired by now. But... Okay. She's in the College of Business there. College of in... Okay. I in... knew some of the law school professors, and then okay. I also knew um, a couple of people in their computer science department. But like I said, it's been a while since I've been in touch. I should reach out to some of them and see yeah, if they're still Sheree active awesome. or retired. Sheree is awesome. And she does a lot of open source work as well. Yeah, I would second that. She She's pretty great. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. So last um, on the agenda for today was I just 
I just wanted to kind of put this on, not technically part of chaos, but we may be doing some um, co-pilot. That's, I always get that wrong. Some co-pilot work uh, with GitHub uh, across Africa, doing some workshops over the course of the next year to kind of introduce folks to uh, co-pilot as a development tool and then working with folks over the course of the year to kind of see how Copilot has had an impact on their lives, on their experiences, on job prospects, whatever it might be, um, to just kind of see how things like Copilot actually have an impact in the lives of people. Um, Ruth has been leading a lot of that, and I think she's looking at a variety of different workshops across different regions in Africa with about 50 people in each of the, the workshops to, like I said, to introduce um, Copilot, talk about how it can be used in software development efforts, um, and then subsequently working with people over the course of the year to understand the impact. So I just wanted to let, let people know about that. Um, Ruth, are you on right now? I don't see Ruth. I see Ruth in the dock, but... Okay, well, that is that. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to to ask about that co-pilot thing or bring up? Well, it brings up an interesting question about maybe, uh, it, does chaos plan or want to be involved in say AI or LLM type help? What would that look like? Well, yeah, it's just such a huge ball of wax, but, um, yeah, I've, I've kind of wondered, you know, just given the diversity of learning models out there, large language models, yeah, and there being a lot of focus on, you know, okay, so depending on the weights, depending on how the data feeds that underlie the engine were constructed or fed in, you could end up with completely different answers out of what you ask of your gen AI. Mm -hmm. And I know that there is a fairly nascent movement within CISA, the Cybersecurity yep. Infrastructure Agency, to get AI bombs going uh, as, as a uh, kind of a sequel to the SBOM movement. And the idea being that you're more transparent about how the model is constructed so that you know whether you could rely on it or not. And I've been thinking along those lines that at some point we might end up with like a good housekeeping seal for an That's AI model to say that it has it, it has aligned with certain metrics that you can feel confident in. Maybe it's the number <clears throat> of tokens it was trained on. Yep. Uh, maybe it's the transparency of the weights. Do Can you even see what it is? Uh, it, 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 I'm not a super expert in this AI space, so I'm I'm fishing a little bit here. But since you were talking about Copilot, I thought it might be a interesting. I have segue. that's super interesting, and I've never thought of that, Ria. <laughs> so, the, like when you talk about S bombs, like I think about um, software supply chains, and certainly I think things like S bombs um, can be an important tool for taking a look at maybe the upstream software projects that you care on and trying to understand the health of those projects. That makes sense to me. Um, but when I think about the data models <laughs> as not necessarily the software, but the data models that also have kind of that same uh, consumption process, you know, like through a, a supply chain of data, mm -hmm. I, I have never thought about the health of the data. Well, even not, not even necessarily the health of the data per se, but my ability as an end user interacting with the Gen AI to have any clue as to whether or not this AI was trained on, say, a biased model that is going yeah. to spout a bunch of biased output <laughs> that aligned yeah. data it was trained on such that maybe if I'm using it for hiring or vetting resumes that then it only picks white males between 25 and 30 as my 
candidate pool out of all the resumes it churns through because it's been trained in a way to highlight those or emphasize a different group that is yeah, yeah. not as ideal. I have, that's super fascinating. I honestly, I've just never thought about that. Um, and I'm not saying that to like dismiss it. I'm saying that as now this is something I have to think about. <laughs> Because that is think, really, it's really a fascinating idea. I think and, the answer is almost always yes, that the uh, AI was trained on a on a biased data model. But 100% right, of the time, the answer is yes. Is the bias <laughs> then transparent? Is the bias discernible so that you yes. know what you're getting into? Yeah, tra the transparency is the part that I'm super interested in. That's really fascinating. Um, I mean, if chaos is looking to expand its ambit on health and open source and eat, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, I'm not really sure what all the intersections could be here, but it seems to me as I, I'm going to put myself out of the role of being in an OSPO and being, well, I really don't know that much about AI to begin with. So let's ignore that for the moment, but as an end user, when I play around with um, mid journey or the stable diffusion and things. I get stuff out of it. It's a lark, but I haven't reached the point where I'm actively using this stuff to make real decisions. Mm -hmm. it, it's more, you know, I've just been playing with it, but at some point it's going to be a real part of all of our work lives. Right. And how do we choose do we just pick whatever's the most popular one? Do we base it on the number of tokens the thing was trained on? I know there is a leaderboard, which I actually didn't realize existed until a few weeks ago, but there's a site with a leaderboard of all the large language models and where they rank. And I'm super curious about like, how did they decide to rank these? What Did they rank them based on tokens? Did they rank them based on popularity? Right. Popularity? Did they rank them on, um, you know, stability of the uh, high power computers that are running them? You know, I, I didn't really delve into it that much, but I just thought it was really interesting that there was an actual leaderboard for LLMs. Um, I'm going to put this on the agenda for our metric meeting for, for tomorrow as well. This is super interesting. I just... Um, so thanks for bringing this up, Maria. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I pretty much shot my whole lot on on you know my level of understanding or yeah, no, uh, it's just I really... contribute to this, but yeah, sure, I'll <laughs> throw out a. Really I appreciate I appreciate that. <laughs> it was really it was great. I love when like these ideas you know just kind of show up, which is really cool. Because um, I think I think you're right. I think like pulling on that thread, there's a lot to it. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I found this. I was trying to look up for stuff on AI bomb. And here's a news article that I found that actually mentions an AI bomb. I don't know how um, uh, how thorough it is. It looks like this is a company that kind of does this type of analysis, maybe. AI bomb. That's like a new phrase I'm going to have to get into my head. Yeah, it, it's about AI supply chain security is what they seem to focus on. Huh. Uh, so so that's, you know, that's kind of a shill article from a vendor. Yeah. But I know I have heard other entities, and in, in, in particular, Alan Friedman from CISA, I'm just about positive he's done a talk on AI bombs. On this. What's his name? Oh, Alan. Alan Friedman at CISA. Um, I'm trying to find a YouTube video with him talking about this because he okay. definitely, he does a lot of talking on S-bombs. Okay. But I don't know if there's, I can't find, you oh, know, oh. it's odd when you can't find something in Google, right? <laughs> <laughs> When you know it's there too. Um, yeah, I know it exists, I'm, or I'm almost positive it exists. Come on, Google, be better, you know. 
Yeah, is it supposed to be powered by AI or something? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if anybody else has anything to add, that would be great. Um, if not, thanks for being here. And, you know, until next time. Oh, and Matt, Alan yes. has spells, and it's F R I E D M A N. Like that. And two L's in Alan. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Just because if you're searching on a misspelled name, if you're even yeah, And then, yeah, especially the way I had <laughs> typed it, that's pretty, probably a pretty common name. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate the feedback. It's really great to see all of you. Take care. Bye. Bye.